the originality of Jesus. I am making all things new, Revelation 21.5. The word originality is not mentioned in the New Testament because no one in Palestine ever questioned whether Jesus was original or not. They all assumed that he was. Wherever he went, people were amazed by him. Judea had become a sleepy place, but Jesus' teachings woke everyone up. People were filled with excitement and astonishment, exclaiming, We have never seen anything like this before. His teachings were seen as new and innovative. Even his harshest critics admitted that no one had spoken like him before. There was something unique about his manner and his message that caught people's attention and shed new light on God and humanity. Although there were many teachers in Palestine, none spoke with Jesus' authority. The common people noticed that he was different from the professional teachers of the time. They recognized that he had a special presence and wondered who he really was. Jesus' distinctiveness caused a sensation and left the whole nation in awe. If he had simply repeated the old teachings in the same way, he wouldn't have angered the religious experts or faced the tragedy of being crucified. He was too original to be accepted as he introduced new and revolutionary ideas that threatened the authorities. It was because he brought about change that he was crucified. Interestingly, the originality of Jesus is now being debated. This is a hot topic in our time. Many Bible scholars have argued against his originality, claiming that everything he said had been said before and that he didn't contribute any new ideas to the world of thought. These critics assert that even his language is borrowed from poets and prophets, and his ideas can be found in earlier literature. To support their claims, they have extensively searched the Old Testament for similar phrases used by Jesus, and they have examined the writings of ancient rabbis to find evidence that Jesus' best ideas were actually borrowed. They haven't limited their search to Hebrew literature alone. They have also looked into the sacred books of other distant Eastern cultures to prove that this Hebrew prophet was either a plagiarist or an echo. Some have even suggested that Jesus may have traveled to India in his life, gathering ideas there to teach his people. According to these writers, Jesus' speeches are a collection of quotes. They argue that he simply repeated the wisdom taught by others, imitating famous speakers and poets. They claim that he was a clever and talented eclectic who gathered the best ideas from various minds and times and dazzled the world with borrowed treasures. What can we say about all of this? Was Jesus truly original? This idea of originality always sparks discussion. No one has ever claimed to be original without facing disputes. Even geniuses who are considered among the great thinkers of the world have faced critics who vehemently denied their right to be recognized. Molière, a creative and inventive genius from France, faced accusations that he stole much of his work from old bookstalls. Shakespeare, England's most original poet, was accused by his contemporaries of borrowing ideas from other sources. Some argue that his mind was not truly original as he drew inspiration from French and Italian literature. Ralph Waldo Emerson, an American writer known for his thought-provoking ideas, is seen by some as merely gathering ideas from other influential figures in history. So, was Jesus really original? It depends on how you define originality. If being original means creating words that have never been heard before or using phrases that no other language has ever used, then Jesus was not original. He did not invent new words and many of his phrases reflect the language of the past. He also did not introduce ideas that had never been contemplated before. His main ideas about God, the soul, duty, and destiny had already been explored or suggested by Hebrew poets and prophets. The principles of conduct that Jesus taught were mostly in line with what had been proclaimed by other godly individuals before his time. This may come as a surprise to those who haven't given it much thought, but upon reflection, it is reasonable to expect that correct ideas about God, the soul, duty, and destiny would have existed prior to Jesus being born in Bethlehem. It would have been unfortunate if Jesus had arrived on earth and found no existing concepts that aligned with the truth or feelings in people's hearts that God could delight in. The truth is that God has always made himself known. The Son of God has always been present in the world, shedding light on every person who is born. From the beginning, he has guided individuals towards right ideas, 
right feelings, and right conclusions. Therefore, we should not expect Jesus' teachings to be completely unprecedented. Instead, we should expect to find that everything he taught had been anticipated and that his central ideas had already been present in the writings of holy individuals who were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not introduce new ideas or truths. Instead, he picked up on the ancient writings, proclaiming that they contained the Word of God and that he had come to interpret their meaning and fulfill what the poets and prophets had envisioned. He did not come to destroy the old ideas or truths, but rather to bring them to fruition. There had been hints, expectations, and approximations, and now, in the right time, God was going to speak his complete message through his Son. This is where we find the originality of Jesus. It is not in his phrases or even in his concepts, but rather in his emphasis and approach to interpreting life and the world. He started by reading an old passage from Isaiah, but he emphasized parts of it in a way that had never been done before. As a result, the passage resonated with the congregation in Nazareth as if it were a fresh revelation. People were reading the scriptures, but they did not know which words to emphasize. Jesus understood this. Consequently, the scriptures became new to them. Religion consists of both ceremony and ethics. Like everything else in the world, it needs both a physical form and a spiritual essence. However, the leaders of the Jewish church had forgotten where to place their emphasis. Jesus knew. By emphasizing mercy over sacrifice, he revitalized religion. People had forgotten how to understand the world around them. There were institutions and there were human beings, and the wisest individuals in Israel had lost sight of what was truly important, the individual soul. Jesus shifted the emphasis to the individual, thus opening a new chapter in world history. There was also a unique tone in his teachings that had never been heard before, not even in the voices of Moses or Elijah. It was a tone of assurance, certainty, and authority. It is not just the words that a person speaks that hold significance. It is also the way in which he speaks them. Jesus had a unique way of speaking that had never been heard before in Palestine. His voice was steady and confident, and he never had any doubts or uncertainties in his words. He always spoke with certainty and authority, saying, Truly, truly, I say to you. This was his own style of speaking, and he didn't learn it from anyone else. Jesus had a personality unlike anyone else. Even Roman soldiers could sense that he was different from any other person they had known. He had all the normal human emotions and abilities, but he possessed them in a way that was stronger and more extraordinary than anyone else. Some say that in art, artists are praised for doing what everyone else is trying to do, but doing it better. Jesus was the pinnacle of humanity. He had an abundance of life and power, and even nature responded to him with the slightest touch. He claimed to be the light of the world, the bread of life, the source of living water, the only good shepherd, the way, the truth, and the life. He said that he was the only one who truly knew God and could save the world from sin. This was something completely unique and original. No one had ever spoken like this before, in Palestine or anywhere else. Even the greatest Hebrew poets and prophets didn't express themselves in the same way. When Jesus spoke about himself, it was something truly original and remarkable. John, who knew Jesus well, heard him say, Behold, I am making everything new. He could say this because he himself was new. He didn't have the same weaknesses, fears, and sins that we have. His perspective was different, and he understood things in a way that we can't fully grasp. He invites us to come to him and he will make everything new. He does this by changing our attitude towards life, helping us focus on what truly matters and showing us that appearances and rituals are not as important as having a loving heart. He takes away our fears and replaces them with faith and hope. He sets us free from our limitations and brings us into the light and freedom that come from being children of God. This is something only he can do. He did it for Paul, who was a scholar and well-versed in the rabbinical writings, but found that they couldn't satisfy his deepest needs. It was only when he encountered Jesus that everything changed for him. If life has become dull and uninteresting for you, and the world seems mundane, there is a solution. Go to Jesus and surrender yourself to him. Merge your life with his and adopt his perspective on things and his way of serving God. 
Take on his mindset and his values, and you will experience the same transformation that Saul of Tarsus did and that many others have experienced. He will make everything new for you. He brings unity, simplicity, elevation, transformation, and beauty to human life because he is the master and savior of the heart. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come.